Welcome, future masters, to section three, where we're doing tactical categorization, visualization, and pattern recognition all in one video. Well, right now, this is the third in the series. So, what are we doing here? Good question. Let's take a stock of what's up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, why does one pawn up? Everything else is even. So, what do we have here? We have a chessboard. No, I'm just kidding. All right, one of the things we could do is I have no idea. We're looking for targets or some kind of visual cue, hopefully, for a tax that we can make. Ah, I see the deal. What you have here is an overload. It's not obvious, but when I say it and show it to you, you're going to go, well, of course. That's, the, that's what separates the men from the boys. The overload is the rook on A1 has to guard two items, and he can only guard one of those items at a time. So, what happens is, look, rook and bishop both hit a2 queen hits b1 so i can play rook takes a2 attacking queen and rook he can take this if he takes with his queen <laughs> bishop takes queen obviously and he's toast so he's not going to do that that's a stupid move and that just loses the whole house basically so rook takes pawn he plays rook takes rook, and now we hit him with the in-between move. Queen takes knight check, double attacking the rook with the bishop and the queen. This is the overload right here, is the rook on a1. Goodbye, Charlie. Queen takes rook, and now we're going to trade queens. He's finished. You notice we're a knight ahead for nothing. He's finished. He'll struggle for a little bit, but it's game over for him. All right, now, see, here's the thing. He took my piece on C8, right? Probably a rook, that jerk. Yep, he did. Took my rook. You know, I can take this back, and I, I've lost an exchange. Okay, that's not, that's not by itself devastating. But I see something that he didn't pay attention the thing he missed is that how many pieces are guarding his king? The answer really is zero. No, 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 no. Well, how does this move grab you right here? So I saw that he had no pieces guarding his king. Well, I already had one attacking. That's the queen attacking the bishop. I'm just going to add on to it because he can't defend it whatever you ain't checking me again well he could but it's gonna be pawn takes free queen or pawn takes free queen i told you <laughs> i don't know i guess i'll play checkmate is that okay holy moly It's vicious. Ah, do I see what I think I see is the question. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, so that last problem was don't automatically recapture. There was a positional problem that he had. His king was undefended. So, see I see bishop takes pawn check. Because again, it's the same question. How many pieces are defending his king? The answer is just his queen. So if we take this pawn check, we're clearing the control of the file and giving it to the rook. So bishop takes pawn check, pawn takes bishop, queen takes pawn check. Notice his king has no moves. He must play now king d7 or king to c6. I mean queen queen to d7 or queen to c6. If he goes to queen d7, queen takes queen as checkmate. So queen c6, 
Again, his king has no moves still. Let's transfer the attack now to the back rank. Queen to b8 check. He can, he can only play queen c8. Queen takes queen check, and that's checkmate. So, again, his king is under defended and pinned in, trapped. We got him. We don't take this, of course, because it's good defended by the rook. But our rook destroys. He can't defend every weakness. And checkmate. This is what um, visualization does for you. Again, with the again with the overloaded piece. The bishop is overloaded. I am threatening rook takes rook, check, bishop guards that, and then I have queen takes knight I'm threatening. So, I can't sacrifice, well, in a, in a, there's the fantasy move. Queen takes knight, bishop takes queen, ha ha, you lose. Bishop takes bishop, check, and then rook takes rook, could checkmate him if he goes in the corner, but this relies upon terrible moves to be played. I don't play chess that way. No good player does. We want to beat the best moves so that if he plays anything less, we're going to just annihilate this guy. So we don't play queen takes knight for obvious reasons. We're going to play rook takes rook check. The bishop is the only move that he's got. Bishop takes rook. Queen takes knight check. He's toast. I'm sorry. If he wants to play bishop back, we can hit this guy again if we need to. Now he's threatening c2 to a degree. Whatever, dude. We'll cover that when we get to it. Doesn't matter. This is this is game over. Now we have queen a8 check, which wins either wins material or forces him to trade off his queen. So queen a8 check, queen c8 is the best move. Bishop e8, we take the bishop for free check. Or as my father would say, queen takes free bishop check. So queen a8 check, queen c8, queen takes queen, rook takes queen. And then pawn, no, sorry, queen checks. Oh, we, we, yeah, queen checks. Just want to remove the liability of bishop takes queen. Queen c8, pawn takes rook. You lose, buddy. This removes the liability of bishop takes queen. Pawn takes free rook, you lose because the bishop guards the queen. Okay, you're a rook down. Goodbye, superstar. Man, you look at this position. It doesn't look like we're winning, does it? But, mm, there it is. So, okay. Well, Man, if there's another move besides queen takes free queen check, I swear I don't see it, okay? See my father going, well, you know, queen takes queen check, dude. It's like, okay, this must be a combination that, that we had set up. You know, we virtually, and we've come in at this point. So queen takes queen, he has only one move. Rule says we're winning, king uh, e2. So... What uh, what can we do? We can go queen to b2 or queen to c2 check. We want to try and fork his his bishop and king, I suppose, because the bishop guards the rook. So we want to go, let's go. It doesn't really matter. Let's go king c, queen c2. It just um, restricts him the most. King to e3 is a potential move. Ah, that's, no, we don't want to do that. You don't want to check him on c2. You want to check him on b2 so we can get queen e5. So, queen takes queen check. This is the right move. So in a tournament game, when I'm calculating this out, I, I realize now that queen takes queen is obviously... I'll play this to get out of my face. Don't make the visualization more difficult. As you visualize longer and longer sequences, your percentage of making an error increases to the point where you know, other factors take into account. You've been playing in the tournament. You might be a little bit tired or whatever. 
you know, there, there's all kinds of things. We want to make it, we always want to make it as easy as possible for ourselves. So we want to play queen to b2 check because king e3 is threatening to get up here and, and defend this bishop. We want to stop king e3 with queen e5 check. So queen b2 check. Where is he going? He can go to d3. We're a jerk. Queen to d3. We don't have a good check for that, do we? Hmm. Well, oh man, this guy is a freak. Look what he's going to do. He's checkmating us if we don't, if we're not careful. There's my dad's rule number one, rook. He's threatening rook g8 check. That jerk. I don't know, man. If I check him here, queen c2 might be the right move. Queen c2, king e3, queen e3, I mean, queen c3 check. This looks like a winner. We need to get that bishop. I guess my, uh, restricting him on c2 seems to be the better move because king f3, queen takes f5, check, and then queen takes bishop. I'm thinking queen c2 now is the right move. Yeah, because queen e3, queen c3, check. I mean, king e3, queen c3, check. He goes to f4, we go to d4. No, we go to e5. So this is how you how you do it. Well, this looks obvious, but let's see. We are two pieces down. All right, who defends this king? Negative, negative, a little bit, a little bit, negative. Well, he could defend here. So I, my thinking is rook takes knight check. We're down two pieces. Oh, actually, we don't have to take this. This, uh, this guy's pinned. We can play queen to f2 check. Whoops, mate. This is a whoops checkmate. The bishop guards the pawn, right? Queen guards f1, e1, d2, e3, and f3. Whoops, checkmate. I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the pinned knight that key that cued me in to the f2 square. The previous problem with that bishop on that we won by queen to e5 check was the fact that his his bishop was so far away from his king it was loose and potentially collected by strategic queen checks, which we played and executed with flawless precision. And it was harder than it looked. But hopefully when you go and look at it again, my mental sequence kind of showed how gettable it really was. So here to me, this is fairly, fairly obvious. We have this pin knight, right? He's got two defenders, a pawn and a bishop. So let's rip one of the defenders. Knight takes bishop. Knight captures knight. Fine. Knight takes knight now on c6. And if he takes it, pawn takes bishop checks, forking king, rook, and knight on d5. Game over. Game over. Yeah, well, good luck with that, buddy. So... That's a very smart and clever move, but guess what it loses? Because what happens is we can move with a discovered check. Knight b4 discovered check. Pawn takes bishop, knight takes knight, and we are one piece ahead. Right now we have three pieces. He's got three minors. He has two minors. But knight checks here, adds another attacker to this. He's, you know, if we move this guy, if we go, well, bishop a4, it isn't that bad. He can make this annoying with b5, bishop to here. Eh, it's okay, I guess. Bishop to a... 
Oh, well, bishop a4, b5. I don't know, he's really not gating anything. Bishop to b3, I'm threatening his knight again. His, it's, compl it's more complicated than it needs to be. Knight b4 check is like pawn takes, knight takes knight. He's got no development. I've got a knight threatening c7. This is just, this is what I see. This is a, this is a piece up. He's got zero threats. And we are just in, you know, land of happiness is what that is to me. Turns out that was correct. So it's one of those things, like I said, my spidey senses tells me, oh man, you're, do you're doomed. Look at this. I see the automatic knight d7 check, a discovered attack against this queen. The check of the knight makes it devastating. Technically, we are two rooks down. So we got to be careful here. <clears throat> got to be careful. In fact, knight d7 check is bad. I know it sounds wrong when I say it, right? Knight d7 check is bad. Queen takes knight. Queen takes queen. And I have queen and bishop against two rooks and two bishops. He's got the advantage because basically he's got two rooks and a bishop against my queen. But I have a better move. Like I said before in, in the, one of the previous segments, that when you find a good move, look for a better move. Because this is good. We're two rooks down. We're going to get it closer. But we're still losing. I see a better move. And the better move is this. Queen to f3 check. He can go king g7 or queen to e6. But I'm noticing that his king is in an oddball position with inconvenient escape routes. King e6 is not a real escape route. Queen f3, king e6, queen takes f7 is checkmate. Because the knight guards d7, the queen guards d5. So queen f3, queen, king g7, queen takes f7 is also checkmate. So, queen d7, knight d7 check, winning the queen, super tempting. It was the first move that I saw, but my discipline is that don't take the first offering. Look for something that's winning. That wasn't winning. This is winning. Oh, you're going to give me the bishop and then let me checkmate you? <laughs> Deal. Okay. Like I said, this one, this is section three. This is hard and very hard. Looking great so far. Looks to me. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I kind of want to play. Bishop takes g6. Bishop takes g6. Pawn takes. Queen takes g6. Um, check. King h8. Well, he could play. Queen g7. And I would just go queen takes uh, d6, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, we're a pawn down. Again, what's defending his king? No. Yes. No. No. He's got one defender to his king. I have attacker, attacker, not yet an attacker and sort of attacking so bishop takes the point is if he doesn't take it i'm threatening bishop f7 check which is just absolutely devastating with queen to h8 coming um or bishop to e6 whatever so bishop takes pawn takes queen takes if he goes to the corner I have check here. What does that do? Well, again, oh yeah, when I check him, if he goes to the corner defending his bishop, I could play queen, oh yeah, queen e8 check, and then rook to f7. Goodbye. Okay, now for sure, yeah, he's toast, right? No, I can't take this. I can't do this move because he's got bishop f8, the jerk. 
can play queen takes bishop and I'm one, two, three, four, five. I'm I'm a pawn ahead. Not great. But it's pawn ahead is pretty good. Oh, check, king f8, not a check here. There's not a check here. That's the problem. Uh, take the bishop. And he's got a wrecked king side, and I have a pawn advantage. Hey, sometimes that's all you get. You know, it isn't checkmate every time, as they say. You know, it looks kind of inconvenient for him. So let's look at h4 check. Problem, see, the problem with king G, rook g7, king f6, he, he, he's maybe getting away here. King f6, queen g6, king e5, this is where the turtle is going. Although, yeah, I don't have queen to f6 checkmate. Queen g7, you know, he's got moves, maybe. King h5, uh, I don't even have a check. <laughs> it's any good, right? Queen g7, king h5. Hey, I dare you to check me. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. So queen g7 stinks. Rook g7 doesn't look very good. h4 looked better. I've got him trapped. Let me try to hammer him. See, again, how many guys are defending his king? Sort of, sort of, no, and no. So I've got queen and rook against rook and knight. Let's add a pawn to it. h4 check. King g4, let's go, I don't know, queen g6 check. Now, well, maybe not that one. Maybe I go rook to, uh, actually rook g7 check, because I want to keep my queen guarding this pawn. Uh, at least I think I do, I don't know, just, you know, whatever. So, h4 check, king g4, rook g7. Where are you going, Bobby Fischer? Bishop knight, he goes knight to g5, rook takes g5, check. That looks like checkmate to me. I am going to get a drink here, and then I'm thinking about this checkmate. So, let's look at this again. h4 check. King to g4, rook to g7, check. The only move he's got... I mean, yeah, it's checkmate if, unless he puts his knight there. So he's got only one move. We're winning according to the rule. Rook takes g5, check. Now he's on g4. Queen owns this. Pawn and rook own, I mean, pawn owns the rook. So it's good there. Pawn owns this. No, he's got, yeah, rook is checking g, g, up from g5. So g3 is owned by the rook. Pawn, that's checkmate, man. h4. My spidey senses have been honed by literally over 50 years of chess. So h4 check, my first move that I mentioned to you, is the correct move. Because I have him so restricted, my spidey senses have told me, don't even mess with this. Let's try to add an extra attacker. He has his queen and rook do nothing. This doesn't do much. So this was the, you know, the, the king is out in the open. That's an oddball. The best categorization I can give you is that it's, it's, it's odd and it makes me concentrate on the odd positioning. You just don't see kings out there because against good players, kings out in the open, they just get, they just get destroyed and you're seeing it happen. Again, in a tournament, I know this is winning. The whole thing was winning, but every move I'm just, recalculating rook takes i own every square around this king this is checkmate there's a 50 in hard and very hard and a 50 is good enough for me all right but we ain't done yet so we are on fire. That last problem was 2656 rated. So continue the butt whipping is what I say. Well, we have, I don't know, man. Oh, geez. Nasty. It's nasty. I see a nasty move. The nasty move I look at here 
is a skewer of queen to g5. Skewers his queen and his rook. The, the point of that move is that if he doesn't take my queen, I would play knight to f7 check and just win his rook outright. Because he can't move his queen, I'll take it. I'll take the rook. So if, this is the what if technique. You might want to write that down. The what if technique is so what if I just play this move and he doesn't take me? What if he doesn't take me? Knight takes f7 check. Then he play queen takes. Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. Queen takes rook. This is destruction. So if I go and also queen g5, if he takes me, this is the nasty move I saw. Queen takes my queen. Knight takes f7 check. King takes h7 is forced. And then I have knight takes g5 check. I don't know if I'm gaining anything out of this, but it looks pretty good. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So queen g5, queen takes, knight f7, king h7, knight takes g5, check. He can't go anywhere except g8 because it's a fork. h8 and h6 are forks. Knight f7 forks the rook. So king g8, and then I got rook. I mean, knight takes e6. I am cleaning some clock here. Threatening g7, rook to d7, my knight is on e6. h6, this looks too nasty. Okay, or not nasty enough. That looked good to me, man. How about, how about queen e, uh, e3 check right off the bat? I don't know, good question. Queen d checks, king f1. Hey, um, what about rook checks, pawn takes, queen checks, king to there, doesn't do anything, king to there, I'm not doing anything against that either, crud. goes forward and I'm dead. Oh, oh, yes, you lose. Queen e3 check is the killer. Okay, it says not. That was abs. The, the point is that king f1, rook takes, pawn takes, check. Whatever. What do you say is the move, is what I like to know. What? Oh, 93. Okay. That's a 27.98. Well, there you go. I uh, missed that one. Let's check this guy out here. I swear this move is also winning. Just H6 first. Yeah, he's going to have to lose control. Can't take this because queen takes, queen g8 is checkmate. Rook takes, pawn takes, rook, queen, game over. And now, knight checks? No. Queen g5. My idea was good, I just put it in the wrong sequence. This is exactly the idea that I had. Devastation. Yes, it's better. The execution is a little better. My, I think my idea wins also, but this is wins better, no question. Can't take it because of the rook. 
King King but this way King G8 H7 check is just devastating. Again, he can't block the the queening. I mean, he can, but not he can't go to G7 because a knight fork him. So like I said, King G8 H7 check. King H8 loses. King G7 loses. Uh, King to F7 is illegal. Yes, I mean my. There, the, the sequence that wins is better than what I play, no question. My idea is the correct idea. So this is where you, you know, you would get partial credit. But here it's pass or fail. And so my move was inferior. 8-6 is a stunning move. That's the one you'd see from Grandmaster fill in the blank. You're going, oh, dude, what a move. That's nasty. Because my whole Queen G5 sequence that I saw was the, the devastator. He set up better. Yeah, he's just toast. Everything he does loses. The best kind of position there is, right? So that was phenomenal. See, the sequence is make your move. Don't be afraid of the result because you have a win. Or yet if you don't win, you get a free lesson. That makes you stronger for the next time. I'm at the apex of my ability at age 60, which basically doesn't happen. This is correct. Now, my thinking is that maybe it didn't like my move. My move is winning. Bishop takes here. I'm just telling you, I think this is winning. But rook takes a2 might be winning better. Let's find out. Oh, no, rook takes e2. That is bishop takes bishop. Rook takes rook. Yeah, that's an awesome move, actually. Rook takes e1 check. And now if he leaves this rook, we take this rook. If he goes here, we take the bishop. Whoops. Okay, if he leaves the rook, we take the rook. I mean, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? And we're two rooks against a bishop. Advantage. Yeah, pretty good. That was an awesome sequence, you know. So get a lesson. Get a victory. The, the deal is you get a victory or you get a lesson. This is not a 1,200 players problem. Sorry, dude. Oh, no 12 player, 1,200 player on the planet has ever solved this problem on his own. I'm telling you, bishop takes bishop, knight takes, what are we, uh, bishop takes bishop, knight takes, and then, what is it, knight takes bishop, and then what else, mm, rook to here, yeah, it was all right. takes knight check that move never even came into my sights for whatever reason I couldn't tell you it happens it happens to better players than me grandmasters actually the uh, other day some grandmaster missed a maiden one he got maiden two I guess I think it was I think that the thing was that he missed a maiden one but saw maiden two and I've said it before you know maiden one maiden a hundred if you play whatever you see wins it all counts the same so you know the the thing was like some guy was like how do the grandmaster miss maiden one well he saw maiden two he played the winning line that he saw so it's not a problem you would just think a grandmaster would see maiden one but guess what he's a person and you know we see things differently and even a great player like a grandmaster Maiden 2 is still checkmate winning, isn't it? It doesn't really matter. You know, the name of the game is not perfect chess. You don't play perfect chess. You just play the best that you can. And if you 
play the right moves enough, you win. It's not a game of perfection. It's a game of imperfection. And so the struggle of chess is to get close to perfection, relatively speaking, and then execute. I'm not perfect. Dude, I, I mean, I just scored 50 here, giving lessons, scoring 50. So you think about that. I'm giving lessons and scored 50, um, which is pretty excellent. Grandmasters score more. Well, because they're Grandmaster Pros and they spent their time working on that when I didn't spend my time working on exclusively chess. So that's the deal. It's not about being perfect. It's about being the best you can be. And there's no such thing as a bad 50. Take that to the bank. If you've never scored 50, you know that you would go, I will take a 50 and be so proud of it, as you should, that you brag about it. And there's nothing wrong with that. So hopefully you guys have got a lot out of these problems, those pattern recognitions, the visualization. And the categorization is very important. And this is going to help you get stronger day by day by day. And you're going to be stronger. So like the video, share it with your friends. It'll help them get stronger. When they get stronger and you play them, that helps make you even stronger. And that's how you get better. So I hope you enjoyed them. I'm going to have some more. I'll see you guys later.